Hi, it's time for another episode of Screens and Pixels and today I'm coming to you from my boiling room. To film, I have to close my window and turn off my fan, so let's see how I do. I've actually split this one up into two episodes. The other Screens and Pixels video is Netflix favorites. If it's already up, I'll put a link in the description. If not, then it will be up soon. There's a couple where I wanna go a little bit more in depth. There's some that I just want to mention and recommend basically, so let's get started. First of all, there's obviously The Handmaid's Tale, which is now being broadcast in the UK which is very exciting, by Channel 4. I think by the time that I'm filming this, episode 1 and 2 have been aired and I have been absolutely loving it. I recently read The Handmaid's Tale for my End of the World book club series and I freaking loved it and I had really, really high expectations for the show and they've definitely made it come true. It is quite interesting to see how they definitely sort of take certain moments and cling on to them a bit more and make them a bit longer and make them big events but I do think that so far this is a really faithful adaptation and I cannot wait to see more of it. Next up, Moulin Rouge Secret Cinema. I had never been to Secret Cinema before and I think one or two months ago I went to my very first one which was Moulin Rouge themed. If you don't know about Secret Cinema, it's this thing that happens in London. Basically, Secret Cinema will pick a film and then they will put on this amazing evening, they do like loads and loads of different evenings across six months, where you basically go and be part of the film. So you get a character assigned to you, everything is very secret, hush hush. And when you arrive, you're suddenly in the world of the film and you get to experience part of it. There's actors, there's quests, and then you also watch the actual film. I'd seen some of them sort of come and go and hadn't gone to any of them and Moulin Rouge was the one for me. I don't want to give away too much, I just sort of want to say if you don't know about Secret Cinema yet, definitely go check it out. I had an amazing night. Also, as a tip, if you are going to Secret Cinema, yes, your costume is important and definitely read about your mission, but I spend a lot of time worrying about getting the exact things right and I wish that I had taken a bit more time to sort of like relax and enjoy and just get a costume together that was fun and maybe not like 100% like the character that was prescribed to me. So basically be a little bit more chill about it. So that would be my tip for you, but it was a fantastic night and I would 100% go again. So by the time I talk about this, I um, don't know if the Moulin Rouge one will still be on, but keep an eye on their website and if the right film pops up for you, 100% go. I never know what order to do these in, so I think I'm gonna do the other film that I've watched. Last month, I went to see My Cousin Rachel, which is a book to movie adaptation of the book by Daphne du Maurier. Funnily enough, I don't think I included it in my book to movie adaptations list just because I didn't know that much about it and I usually try and pick the ones that I'm most excited about. Then I got invited to go to the screening and I actually didn't have a chance to read the book so I hadn't read the book. I was very pleasantly surprised. I had a really good time in the cinema watching this film. Although that sounds like a bit of a weird one because it's quite dark and creepy. The basic setup of the story is that the main character who's played by Sam Claflin, who you might recognize from the second Hunger Games film amongst lots of other ones, has this uncle? Cousin? Uncle? that has taken care of him his whole life. And then when he's away for school, that father figure gets sent to Italy for his health. He meets this woman um, and then dies. And now the main character, when he returns from school and is like ready to be an adult, basically doesn't quite trust the situation, goes to Italy, and then also ends up meeting his cousin Rachel, both there and then also when he goes home. And it just seems like something is slightly amiss and he gets swept up in this dark and creepy adventure. Let's call it an adventure. What I love about it is that it feels like a classic gothic story but then it has all these sort of like regency bits to it so the sort of courting of someone and the way that the characters are dressed so somehow it feels like it's a tiny bit of Jane Eyre, a little bit of Jane Austen with lots of dark stuff sprinkled on top. I definitely recommend you go see it when it's out in cinemas which I haven't looked up yet so I'll put that in the description. At some point in the future I do really want to do a video about gothic novels. I've done one in the past and I want to do a follow-up but I might save that for Halloween but let me know if you're interested. Three more things which I'll all mention quickly. It's two albums and one app. I'll start with the app I guess. It is called Later. I discovered this in my quest to make posting on Instagram a little bit easier because very often I'll have a big chunk of time in which I can like get all my pictures together and like write captions for it but obviously you can't schedule anything on Instagram so I've been trying this one out I really really like it you basically go in put in all your pictures then you put in all the captions and you put in a specific time and then because you can't properly schedule on Instagram it will basically give you a notification saying hey do you want to post now it's ready then you 
copy things over. It's like, it's quite a quick system. It takes a couple of clicks and it makes it a bit easier to post consistently on Instagram. What I also really like is that it gives you a little preview of what your feed is going to look like when all the scheduled pictures have been posted. So yeah, if that is something that you're into, uh, either if you want to use it for your job or for your own Instagram feed, then I would definitely recommend that. Next I have two albums. I don't know how to explain the first one, but I'm gonna try. So it is the new Tom Rosenthal album. I love his previous album. It is my perfect reading music. I listen to it on the tube all the time. He has a new album and all of his um, music videos are very often like filmed out in the countryside of him like running around and dancing around. And what I love is that he can take any topic and turn it into like this beautiful heartfelt song. My favorite song on his new album so far, I've still just been listening to it, is Pasta, P-A-S-T-A, -A. and I just want to read you out some of the lyrics because it's a beautiful ode to pasta. I don't know how to read this while keeping a straight face. P-A-S-T-A, -A, save my day. I've been so lowly. This is one where you're just gonna have to take my word for it and go listen to it. I'll put it in the description. Please do. I love this album and this song's been stuck in my head the whole week. And the other music recommendation I have, for me music recommendations are quite rare because I'm really bad at finding new music so sometimes something is just thrown at me and I'm like yes I'll take it. In this case it was Let Them Eat Chaos by Kate Tempest. Now people in the past have told me about how amazing Kate Tempest is but I somehow never got around to listening to her music then I went to a Lush event and she was there and she performed the whole album. It was an amazing experience. And it's weird because it's basically like one long poem that was made to also be per performed as an album. Um, and it basically follows these different people in London in their bedrooms at night or coming home late from a party and it describes what they're going through, what they're feeling, and it is a really lovely feeling of at the same time lots of people's lives being like messed up and people have issues but also a sort of feeling of togetherness. Those are some of the things I've been enjoying lots recently and I love sharing them with you because I find it hard to find new stuff sometimes. So I figured that I would pass on my favorites. If you have anything that you've been listening to or like an app that you've been using or anything like that that you would recommend, do leave it in a comment below. I'll see you later. Doei!